From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Edgar Cedillo in Bozeman. The city proclaimed equal payday last week. One elected official is saying that they're not meeting up to their standards. So they value me less. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. The latest than, abortion than controversy in our judge. country involves the drug Mifepristone. What are the facts? When will we get an opinion? And how might this impact your state? Next. 6.33, uh, Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. Jane McDonald is off. Uh, snow continuing to fall. The wind is, well, it's not backed off, I guess, all that much. Uh, it's it just, whipping was around the building. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The snow's let up just a touch mm -hmm. in a few areas, but uh, we're going to see a slushy, wet mess for most yeah. of today. Yeah. Uh, temperatures this morning, not frigid, but it is cold, especially when you factor in the snow and the wind and the wet conditions that are out there, a lot of 20s and 30s. That just looks ominous right there, yes, and it does. in some respects it is. We're going to be seeing some accumulation on our area roadways throughout the day. The snow is expected to taper as you go toward the evening. We're not going to see a tremendous amount of snow uh, by the time you head into the weekend, uh, meaning it's going to melt fairly quickly. This is that typical spring snow. It'll stick around a few days and then disappear. Temperatures back into the 30s. There are still flooding concerns, but right now, uh, it's sticking and holding as our temperatures are right around the freezing mark today. Um, not seeing a big drop in temperatures um, overall, though. We'll talk more about what you can expect heading toward the weekend in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 634, our top story this half hour. The first woman to be a municipal chief judge in Bozeman took command of the city court system in January. But as MTN's Edgar Cedillo reports, the judge said the city is not paying her fairly. Last week, the city of Bozeman proclaimed equal payday for the city. A week later, Bozeman's chief judge is saying that she is not getting paid equally. So they value me less, 90% less than the male chief judge. Judge Colleen Harrington has been a full-time judge with the city since she was elected back in 2021. She began her new position in January as chief judge. I became Bozeman's first female chief judge. Harrington says being the chief judge, she is considered a department head who oversees the municipal court system. The city gives department leaders a 15% increase on top of their base salary, one that Harrington says she did not receive. This year, when I asked about it, I was told that I am an elected official and therefore am not eligible for that benefit. In a resolution that passed on Tuesday night, the city commission set both municipal court judges' base pay and gave Judge Harrington a 5% increase for the extra duties, not 15%. We acknowledge there are additional responsibilities of the chief judge, whomever that person is, regardless of gender. We have looked at those responsibilities and compensated accordingly. This has nothing to do with gender, as has been suggested. This is about setting the salary for a position of the municipal judge and compensating for the additional responsibilities of the chief judge. When I asked the city's human resources director if the previous judge received that 15% increase. Seal was the chief judge. He did get the 15% on top of the base pay. He did, yes. Okay. Judge Carl Seal stood up at city commission in support of Judge Harrington and urged commissioners not to okay the pay resolution. Harrington says the timing is ironic one week after the city had proclaimed equal payday. It is about the principle of being fair and treating a female the same as a male. And as Bozeman's first female chief judge, I knew I had to stand up and say something. In the statement from Mayor Andrews, she says, quote, the city commission follows state statute and city charter when determining pay for elected officials, end quote. City commissioners passed a pay resolution 5-0 on Tuesday night. In Bozeman, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. Right, 637 on the national scene. New overnight, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling that the abortion pill Mifepristone should not be immediately blocked, keeping the drug accessible and available for providers to use for now. However, the court did keep in place some provisions of a lower court order restricting how much the FDA can offer the drug. As our George St. George reports, the latest opinion is far from the end of this debate and a ruling by the Supreme Court now remains likely. An overnight ruling means mifepristone for now can still be offered in states where medication abortion is legal, but that the FDA must stop offering the drug through the mail. The reality is this latest ruling is far from the end of this debate. An appeal to the Supreme Court is likely. 
which is why it's important to know the facts. Fact number one, if mifepristone is banned in a later ruling, medication abortions can still occur in states where abortion is legal. That's because mifepristone isn't the only drug abortion providers can use. Typically, mifepristone is used with the drug misoprostol in a medication abortion. Multiple organizations have said, though, that using just one drug, misoprostol, is safe and effective, too. In fact, that method has been approved by the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the World Health Organization. Some providers, though, have reported that option can produce more side effects. This week, Scripps News spoke with Jen Klein, the director of President Biden's Gender Policy Council. The White House is remaining optimistic. I think that we are going to be in a position where we can continue to ensure access to mifepristone. Fact number two, advocates won't easily give up offering the abortion drug even if the pill is blocked. Elisa Wells with Plan C, a reproductive rights advocacy group, says efforts to stockpile the drug in preparation of a ban have been underway for months. Her website provides free legal advice and details how options vary state to state. In some cases, her website recommends picking up pills in Mexico. There is this robust pipeline of uh, pills that come in, mostly through India. We know these are coming in in the tens of thousands. In fact, number three, conservatives had the legal advantage. That's because the Supreme Court is just as conservative now as it was when it issued its abortion decision last year. Carol Tobias, the president of National Right to Life, says anti-abortion groups like hers want to stop as many abortions as possible and legal challenges like this will be common. We knew that it was not going to be over once the court overturned Roe. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. All right, 639, back here at home during COVID, many local schools saw student learning suffer. But at the Montfortin School, many students actually thrived. Zimtan's Elizabeth Fitz reports the school now being honored for that achievement. Montfortin won the blue ribbon last fall because students simply excelled academically, and they are the only school in the state of Montana to win this award last year. Montfortin School awarded the National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence last fall. This was based kind of on test scores during the COVID pandemic. And so when there was a lot of national uh, news about how there was a decrease in student performance on test scores, that our, our kids continue to do really well, that they continue to get a great education here. Um, something that we're really proud of. So this week they are finally celebrating thanks to their parent-teacher organization. We just started planning this assembly and it's kind of a party for our students because they're amazing and our teachers are amazing as well and so we just wanted to recognize and celebrate them. The blue ribbon is given out to schools based on a few qualifications. It's really to focus on school districts that are consistently high achieving in test scores, reading and, and math, or uh, school districts that have closed achievement gaps for those the student subgroups. And Montfortin is one of 297 school districts across the country to receive this honor. It's great to see that there's great education in the Gallatin Valley and we're just super honored to be the one who was chosen this year. Well, a huge congratulations to the Montfortin School District. Keep up the great work. Elizabeth Fitz, MTN News. All right, thank you, Elizabeth, and congratulations uh, to our friends over at Montfortin School just across the way from here.